Scripting Improvements. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the new scripting improvements available as of the release of Unity 2020.1. We've added new features such as configurable interplay mode, serialization improvements, and improvements to the debugging workflow. We've improved IL2 CPP and increased its runtime performance when script debugging is enabled. All of these improvements and features are now available in Unity 2020.1. These scripting feature improvements can help you reduce iteration times and increase your project stability and performance. Compiler performance. Both IL2 CPP and the Burst compiler are improved in Unity 2020. IL2 CPP performance has been improved. The Burst compiler package, now updated to version 1.3 for Unity 2020.1, can compile your C-sharp jobs into highly optimized machine code. It now features fully integrated IDE native debugger support, so you can debug your burst code directly with your debugger of choice. Configurable interplay mode. In Unity 2019.3, we've added the configurable interplay mode settings to allow for faster iteration times. These settings allow you to adjust how the Unity editor enters into play mode and helps to reduce iteration times by disabling scene reloading or domain reloading. Play mode is a core feature of Unity, allowing you to run projects directly inside of the editor. When entering play mode, Unity takes two significant actions. It'll reload the scripting domain state, and it'll reload the scene when entering. This process is useful to ensure that play mode starts similarly to a build, but it takes time. During development, a rapid iteration time can be useful. Starting in Unity 2019.3, including Unity 2020, we've added options to disable domain reload and scene reload. By skipping these steps, the editor can enter play mode more quickly, reducing iteration times, and allowing you to rapidly test and make changes to your project. In this example scene, we have the Unity Royale card battle game project. By disabling both domain and scene reloading, we're able to reduce the time it takes to enter play mode by over 50%. To configure enter play mode, open Edit, Project Settings, Editor, Enter Play Mode Settings. Enable the Interplay Mode Options checkbox to make the reload options available. Option to turn off Scripting State Reloading, and disable the Reload Scene option to turn off Scene Reloading. When Unity skips Domain Reload, none of the static fields or static event handlers will be reset, so you may need to modify your scripts to explicitly reset them in this workflow. For example, in this scene, we've added a spawn counter in the lower right corner of the screen. This script uses a static variable to keep track of the spawn count and is incremented by one every time we spawn a new minion. With enter play mode options disabled, when we enter play mode, the spawn counter is correctly reset to zero. With domain reload disabled, the spawn counter will not reset the value, persisting the value when we exit and re-enter play mode. To make our script work without domain reloading, we've modified our spawn counter script to reset its static variables by using the runtime initialize on load method attribute. We created a new static function, in our case we've called it run on load, and have it reset our spawn count variable to zero. Now when we enter play mode with domain reloading disabled, the spawn count will correctly start at zero. Type Cache API. On the editor side, we've added the Type Cache API, which can reduce iteration times by helping speed up editor scripts. It's common for editor code to extract types marked with a specific attribute. Usually, this is a slow operation that scales linearly based on the number of types. The Type Cache API allows you to leverage the native cache data in the editor's acceleration table, so that your editor scripts can now quickly access types or methods marked with specific attributes and types derived from a specific class or interface. Serialization Improvements Unity 2020 also includes the serialization improvements introduced in 2019.3. We've added a new serialization reference attribute, which lets you serialize C-sharp classes as references instead of value types. This means you can have your serialized C-sharp objects referencing each other, helping you simplify complex data structures like graphs and trees. The serialize reference attribute supports polymorphic data. That means you can serialize a generic list that contains multiple different inherited classes. For example, you could serialize a list of the type animal that contains any objects that inherit from animal, such as cats and dog types. The serialized reference attribute will correctly resolve the inherited data. We've also added support for null values in serialized fields. Previously, when a null field was serialized, it would always be deserialized using the type's default constructor. Now, a null field will be correctly deserialized to a null value. In Unity 2020, 
serialization has been upgraded to automatically create fields for generic types directly in the inspector. Previously, you would need to define a non-generic subclass of the generic class. Now, in Unity 2020, you can create a public field for your generic class type, and Unity will directly serialize it and create the inspector field. Finally, serialization has been updated to handle files larger than 2 gigabytes. Now, game-level data files, asset bundles, etc. can be larger. IDE Support Packages In Unity 2020, all IDE support has now been moved into packages, which provide a more flexible and modular system. We've released packages to support Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and JetBrains Rider. We've also made Visual Studio 2019 available as a package to 2020.1 and offer features such as LiveShare and GitHub integration. All future IDE development and improvements will happen in the version in the Package Manager. Debugging Workflow Unity 2020 features a new debugging workflow that helps you debug more effectively. Now you can switch to debug mode when you need to attach your C-sharp debugger or to release mode for better C-sharp performance when not debugging without restarting Unity. When attaching your C-sharp debugger to Unity 2020 in release mode, a dialog will automatically prompt you to switch to debug mode. You can also manually switch between release and debug modes by clicking on the new debugger icon in the lower right-hand corner of the Unity editor. To change whether your project starts up in release or debug mode, set the code optimization on startup setting under Preferences, General. Code Coverage The Code Coverage feature is available since 2019.3 and newer. When used with the test runner, the Code Coverage package shows you which lines of your code are getting tested, in addition to whether the tests have passed or failed. The test runner is a tool that helps you run unit tests to test your code. Code coverage will show you exactly which lines of your code are executed in addition to whether your test runner tests have passed or failed. If you don't have any tests, the code coverage feature offers a coverage recording feature which allows capturing coverage data on demand. Once a test run is completed, an HTML coverage report will be generated showing the total line coverage percentage and a list of your classes that you can navigate to for a line-by-line -line representation of the coverage. Working in tandem with the test runner, the code coverage package can help you identify and QA bugs more effectively by visualizing where your code is executing. These new scripting improvements and debugging updates are just some of the new features available in 2019 LTS and Unity 2020.1. We hope these new features help you to develop and fix bugs more effectively by enhancing the runtime and editor performance. If you'd like more information on these scripting improvements, links to these features are in the description below. Thanks for watching.